Your first piece is called Close Chorus. Yes. Can you tell us a bit about where the ideas for the piece came from? Yeah, so this was one of the first pieces that I started with this project. And the main kind of starting point was this bass line that I had an idea for. And um, it was kind of going around my head, so I'll play that for you now. <laughs> And that initial bass line kind of provoked the idea of kind of this melody that came in on track two. Um, and then from that kind of initial point, it started to kind of, it was a process of kind of filling the gaps. So as we go along with track two, it kind of lays down a chord and tracks three and four, you know, start to introduce more of a melody in two different parts. One with the beginning of the bar and one at the end of the bar. So I can play up for you now as well. So that's the chord. We've got that kind of melody happening there. And that part of the melody happening right at the very end. So if we put them all together. The whole, the whole kind of section of the kind of track or the, what it's based on is all covered with some kind of melodic interest. Fabulous. So you used your voice for all these samples. Yes. Um, I noticed when you were playing the piece earlier that you used some mixing features on the RC505 Live. Can you just tell us about some of those? Yeah, absolutely. So one of these features that I've kind of decided to kind of capitalise on is the track effects. And the track effect has kind of uh, maybe 10 to 20 different effects that you can apply post-recording. So during live mixing and that kind of thing. Obviously, we've got the faders, which I use towards the end to kind of bring the piece down dynamically. But also, you know, using yeah. using this filter option um, on what I'm using on track B here really helps to kind of just add a little bit of interest. So I'll demonstrate that now. And obviously the rate at which you do that and the speed, you know, you could do it over kind of four bars, eight bars even, or you could do it very quickly and have a fluttering effect as well. Um, just, again, makes it more interesting to listen to. So the expressiveness of the RC505 is partly when you're recording samples and preparing the material, mm. but then you can add an awful lot of effects and process to the recorded sounds when you're doing the performance live as well. Absolutely. So you could, in, for, in, in fact, you know... Um, use a filter when you're recording to begin with and then add another filter once you've done it or add a reverb or something like that. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, scope for creating interest outside of just what you're seeing um, and by adding and kind of affecting what that is. Brilliant. Now, I noticed in your second piece, which is called Beats in Motion, that there are some similar vocal samples being used to the first piece that you're remixing and, and reimagining in, in different ways. You're also using the microphone live to input some new material, and there are some particularly interesting sounds there. Can you explain what was going on in that piece? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, thematically, it's quite similar. Um, the focus was to make it a bit more ryth rhythmically interesting as well, so that's why the piece is in 7 8. But the thing you picked up on is this kind of bass sound that I've managed to use. Um, so I refrained from using it during when I was preparing and I didn't use it as an input effect. But rather what I tended to do was to eliminate the bass line that I pre-recorded on track five and then improvise my own bass line. Um, so I can show it for you now. So I'm selecting uh, the input effects here. Um, so this is going to affect directly what happens on my microphone. And then I'm going over to uh, the guitar to bass effect which is uh, really, really powerful. So I'll start up these loops and then give you a little demonstration. kind of got that power there to kind of affect your voice live which kind of gives it another dimension I suppose. Mm. So I know your natural voice isn't like Barry White <laughs> but you're dropping your octave a yeah. couple of octaves. Tenfold least, I'd say. Um, <laughs> there is an, in fact there's an, uh, an input effect which is called octave where you can actually just have the kind of it doubles your voice but an octave below or you can change it you know the settings of that how, how many octaves it goes you can even go two octaves below. Um, and so, you know, that's one thing you could do. I mean, the guitar to bass is obviously, the clues in the name, meant for turning your guitar into a bass. But using with your voice kind of gives it a 
bit more oomph, I found, rather than the octave one. And you can change the level of that using that dial there as well. And there are loads of other effects on the RC505 which you can explore in, in, in a similar way. OK, Josh, so your third piece is called Grooving Keys. And for this piece, you've used a Roland BK3 keyboard to produce these sample materials. Can you just explain some of the starting points for this piece? Yeah, absolutely. So I wanted to kind of keep it relatively simple. Um, and so it starts with this one idea at the beginning. Um, I'll demonstrate it to you now. And, you know, and as we've talked about a little bit in some of the other videos, there's a lot of power in the RC505 to kind of basically affect some of these sounds as they're coming in and as they're going out. So I thought, how can I make this a bit more interesting? And I thought, let's just use a bit of a filter. So I've started the filter over here, and by twisting this uh, uh, dial here, I can make it sound a little bit more interesting. <laughs> And, you know, by starting to use the filter in a bit of an inventive way, rather than just doing a slow kind of fade, you know, you can give it a bit more energy. You know, I use the rhythm functionality a little bit as well to help me stay in time. So there's a whole catalogue of different drum beats and loads of different time signatures that you can go to to basically help you stay in time, which is one of the things people struggle with the most when they first start using something like this is actually getting the loop to stay in time so that they're not kind of cutting little bits beats out and that kind of thing. So you're using the, the drum beats that are in the RC505 to help you coordinate the playing and the timing of the individual tracks and then presumably you can get rid of the drum beat if you decide you yeah. don't want it uh, later on. Yeah absolutely and I mean this is it you can kind of you can basically use the rhythm functionality to either help you out when you're first recording and then get rid of it if you don't want it and use your own beats and you know beatbox your own beat and that kind of thing or even use some of the drum sounds on the BK3. You, or you can, like I've used in this piece, actually just have it as the standalone rhythm section, you know, use that as the drum beat and then fill in the different sections yourself using the different tracks. Great, so it's really versatile. Mm. The other thing I noticed about your performance of this piece was that you're using different hand positions at the RC505 to trigger different processes in the piece and, and it almost looked like you were kind of playing the RC505 like you might play a keyboard with different hand shapes. So could you just run us through a couple of those and, and explain what you were doing there? Yeah, definitely. So it's, first of all, the RC505 is really nice to use. It's one, it's really well laid out. Um, and so you, in, although it might look a little bit kind of interesting what my hands are doing, it is very simple and it's quite easy to explain. You know, I've started playing with these four tracks here and there's a bit in the song which um, you can check that I want to go to these alternative chords on uh, track five. And so to do that, I need to cancel all of these, maybe get rid of the rhythm and maybe introduce an effect at the same time, you know, and I can kind of balance this quite well. So I'll demonstrate that for you now. You know, just by taking a moment to get your hands in the right place, realise what buttons you're going to be pressing. So I'm pressing stop on all of these four tracks, stop on the rhythm, and start on this track. And, you know, as long as your timing is fairly good, you can count in and make sure you press it at the right time. And then, you know, simultaneously cancel some things and introduce some new things at the same time. Brilliant. So there's a, a performance practice with the RC505 in terms of what you're actually physically doing, which... Um, needs a, obviously a bit of practice to, yeah. to coordinate, but but is, is simple once you've got the hang of that. Yeah, and it's brilliant for you know students to kind of realise the structure of a piece. You know, maybe one of the biggest assets for this in a classroom would be you know structurally talking about pieces of music. You can introduce different sections. You know, recap ideas, affect ideas in a new way, which you know harks back to kind of you know classical music quite strongly. Um, you know, putting this kind of modernistic edge. And, you know, learning different processes and different orders of button presses and, you know, what each of these track effects and input effects do and how to, you know, control that as well. So, yeah, there is a bit of a process in kind of learning which buttons to press and when so that the piece sounds how you want it to sound. Yeah, great. So it, it was nice to see you feature a, a keyboard with the RC505 because obviously in many classrooms uh, there are plenty of keyboards yeah. that, that kids are playing, which is which is great. In your final piece, which we, you've called Alien Stomach, <laughs> uh, you've used some other objects that children would have readily to hand to create some interesting sounds in a kind of soundscape composition. Can you tell us where the ideas for that piece are? Yeah, came from? absolutely. So, you know, the big thing for this piece, which I really enjoyed making, was 
how do we, what do all kids hopefully have with them when they come to school to avoid a detention? You know, they have their pencil case. What do they have in their pencil case? Uh, you know, they have their kind of their pencils, their rulers and that kind of thing. Um, and hopefully they might even have a bottle of water. So I'll grab mine here. Um, but one thing I really want to do is, you know, all kids can have a go at this. You know, if you've got a microphone, you've got one of these uh, in a classroom, they can have a go and it's really easy. And it was all about how do we use these kind of different objects in inventive ways? And what do they sound like? So now I've gone with alien stomach, um, which is a bit of a kind of a wacky idea. But, you know, it plays really strongly. Having an organic kind of thing you're trying to imitate, you know, plays really strong with the RC55 because it's a looper, you know, and what does your heart do? It keeps on beating. You know, all of our bodily processes are really to a rhythm. Um, and so using this as kind of a looping, we have these kind of different soundscapes and different kind of ideas that are looping. And kind of over time, as you listen to it for a bit, for like uh, for a few minutes or like, uh, you know, 30 seconds or something like that, you realise that there is a bit of a rhythm to these kind of weird, wacky sounds. Um, so one of the sounds I'll demonstrate for you was using a pen, and so not using the obviously uh, the nib, um, but using the bottom of this, and you know using a lot of reverb, turning the input on the mic really high up, and then just very gently kind of rolling it over the top. You know, and you get some kind of weird kind of organic-y kind of sounds, and obviously you know the sloshing. kind of uh, water in a bottle and you know using a ruler as well to kind of change the pitch um, and you know with the bottle you can obviously um, blow over the top of that to create kind of that, that kind of timbre as well you know putting all that together with loads of different effects you know you get something a bit random but something that you know you could take into kind of a drama performance kind of you know scenario or whatever you know it's kind of really kind of wacky but so great to have a kind of metaphorical um, application of the looping of the RC505 with our physiology, but also really nice to have um, a piece of music that isn't obviously loop orientated. It's more sound based yeah. in a soundscape sort of tradition. Totally. So a very, a very flexible and powerful tool. Yeah. And, you know, you could take this out of the classroom. You could use an R26 to go and record leaves rustling or whatever, you know, you, you could create anything you wanted to, you know, in terms of soundscapes. And you're not limited as well. You know, you can change the loop and how long it loops for. You can even turn off the loop sync, which means that each track will run individually away from each other. So you don't have to have it all looping at the same time. It can go independently from one another as well. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your four pieces. Really enjoyed talking to you about that today. Thank no you. Worries. Thank you.